Tonight is December the 5th, 2012, and uh, what I'm going to go over tonight is something that I think I have missed for some time, but I've been asked these types of questions multiple times, and while I am no expert on it, we can fumble a bit, and uh, hopefully I can help some people decide how to select, how to uh, check out a scope that they may be going to buy if they have the opportunity to check it out. Now, a lot of this stuff on eBay, of course, is just came from a working environment. Well, duh, what well, didn't come from a working environment? Anyway, I won't get into that, but let's just check it out. Let's suppose you do have the opportunity, or possibly you can call the uh, seller and ask them questions. Okay, here's one. I'm, I'm going to turn it on. Obviously, you want to plug it in and turn it on, <clears throat> and you want to get a trace. Well, this one happens to be set up all right. Beam finder. That's a, that's a good one right there. Suppose it was, suppose when I turned it on, it was like that. I say, well, where's the trace? Well, you can, you can, many ways to approach this, but let's turn the intensity all the way up and press the beam finder. Well, there it is. See, we do have a trace. There's our trace. It's off scale. And then, let's see, we'll have to pay attention to what we're doing here. We got uh, the mode and channel one, not both. There's channel one, there's both, there's channel two. Let's just go to channel one. Normal. And, uh, well, that doesn't matter. Just channel one. AC, ground, DC, doesn't matter where we put that. Beam finder, and then we'll turn the position to where, it's hard to do this with one hand. There it is, and see, I'm holding in the the uh, beam finder and turning the vertical knob at the same time and then when I get in the center and I let go, well there it is, now we have a trace. Well we're halfway home. We know that the horizontal amplifier is working, we know the high voltage power supply is working, so it's not all bad. Now we can back off on our intensity, make sure that that goes on and off, oh, that's good. Make sure our focus works. We're just doing elementary check out of it. Okay, uh, what else might we want to do? We might want to see if we get both traces, but let's go, I'm going to put it in alternate. Now we should have two traces. Well, where's the other trace? Well, we'll have to turn the other vertical knob to see if we can find it. Well, it's not there, is it? Okay, it's because we have it in channel one, we have to go to both. There we go, now we got both. Okay, and there's two traces. Looks like we've got it multiplied times 10 too, um, which is kind of good. I'm, I'm glad that it's kind of goofy here. Our, our divisions per second, I'm slowing it down. See, and since I have it in um, both and alternate, that means I'm going to get one trace and then the other. Let me slow it down even further. See, there's trace A, trace B, trace. See how they're, they're different. They're alternating. If I put it in uh, chop, right here I should get them both at the same time. So that's chop mode. That's alternate mode. And this is add, which you can't see anything from just a trace running across it. So let's put it back in uh, channel one. Go to channel two. There's channel two right there. Let's increase our sweep rate a little bit now that we've got a display. And then we'll exercise our knobs here. Let's see. Let's see both at the same time. So that's working. That's cool. Run it from one extreme to the other. You know, wipe the, the pots good. Let's go back to channel one. Do the same thing. So both of our channels are working. Both. There's our... We should have two channels there. Uh, chopped. Okay. Channel 1, Channel 2. So far good, huh? Well, this is a good scope, so it's actually going to turn out good. Let's see. we got our on off, got our focus intensity and beam finder. We've already gone over that. So we know all these work. We know that Channel 1, both, and Channel 2 work. Our position knobs work. We don't know if this works yet. We do know that our uh, seconds per division works because we can slow it down. See, I've got it slowed down there to 0.1 seconds per division. So 
fed would be one whole second across. So our uh, seconds per division, our horizontal display time is correct. So we know all this is working. Let's see about our horizontal movement. Yeah, see that's moving. See it's kind of gritty there. There's probably some some sand in here. You can see the, the grit on it, but it's working. Here's our magnification times one times ten. That's working. So far so good. Okay. And this so let's hook up a we have to hook up a scope to this, I mean a probe to this one. Because our cal output is right there, that little teeny thing, unfortunately. And then we're gonna hook our probe onto it. Like that. Okay, now let's go just to channel one. And we got it in DC mode. It'll work just as well in AC. There's ground. It won't work there. You won't get anything there, of course. So you put it in DC. Now let's start moving up our times per division. There we go. And we're getting that. Looks like we need to rotate this and and clean it a little bit. Do this to all the knobs. Okay. And it says right here that it's uh, 500 millivolts peak to peak at one kilohertz. Okay, and we've got um, our sweep on, um, oh yeah, our cal and uncal. We turn our cal until it clicks, see? Here, click and unclick. These don't have any lights. Click. Okay. Everything's in cal mode now. Completely clockwise. We're going to look at a different scope here in a minute. Let's run this thing out. If we run it out to 0.1 milliseconds per division, we should get exactly one sweep. Looks like it's off slightly. Um, let's see, where's our sink? Our level right here, our trigger. Our trigger level. Let's turn our trigger level and see if we can get a bit better display. We might need to put it in normal and then trigger it. There we go. Looks like it might be out of calibration somewhat. No big deal. It is out of calibration. Either it's out of calibration or our... Uh, this says approximately. This says approximately. See the two little wiggly lines? A half a volt, 500 millivolts peak to peak, approximately one kilohertz. So maybe this is not a good calibration source. But it does let us know that it's working. And this is not the highest end scope in the world. 2205 GM says it's a 40 megahertz. Actually quite a nice little scope. But anyway, now I got it in normal. Now if we take the, uh, the signal off, see, our trace goes away. That's why you might want to put it in, most people leave it in auto, unless you're trying to sync on something. And then it should sync quite well there. I hooked it back up. And that way, that when you take the probe off, you still have your trace. But you might have to put it in normal to get it to sync on some signals. We'll leave it in auto for right now. So it looks like generally it's working. Let's go to channel two, see if it's working. We gotta move this over to channel two and crank up our volts per division. Let's kind of exercise it, sweep it a little bit. There, it looks the same. Move our position knob kind of working. Um, here's our sync if we leave it in vertical mode. We can put it, if we put it on channel one then we can't sync on channel two. If we put it on channel two it'll sync but we just leave it in vertical mode. A little blue one here. That's the simplest way. Uh, let's see there's a times ten right here. Let's, let's slow it down to where we get something like that and then if we switch this over to times ten it should magnify it out. That's working. So, see, the scope generally is working. So, you might consider buying it. Giving them whatever. At least you know that it's not dead. Okay, let's, let's try another one now. This is an, actually a quite a bit older scope, but <clears throat> this is a 350 megahertz scope. Quite a, a, a nice one. Um, let's check it out, generally speaking. We can press the uh, beam finder here on this one. Let's see if we find it. Okay, it's because we've got it in normal trigger. Let's put it in auto trigger just like the other one. Auto trigger here, sweep mode. And over here, 
it's called uh, mode auto and normal over here the same thing is called sweep mode auto and normal and single sweep so we got it in auto so we got a line I suppose we got it way off scale we can press the beam finder again and it'll it'll come back and then we turn it down until we get the beam in the middle all the time holding in beam finder so now we have a beam let's go to let's check channel 2 there's channel 2 let's see if we can move it around here let's see it moves around channel 1 moves around check out the brightness make sure it gets good and bright yeah it gets good and bright focus yeah. so far so good scale illumination that works lights up um, okay now this one's a little bit different this one has a cal right here it says 5 volts and it has a frequency of 1 megahertz or 1 kilohertz this one's probably a, a bit more accurate we'll put a BNC connector on here and then we run a BNC connector over to channel 1 which is what we're working on it's supposed to be 5 volts per division and right here we're looking at let's put it on 1 move this down we should get 5 volts deflection or 5 divisions 1, 2, 3, 4, I got about 4 and a half. I'm not doing this on purpose, but right here is the, is the, is the calibration for it. Assuming that this is correct, I'm going to calibrate the scope. We get to the gain control and we turn this gain control gently until we get 5. See, I had, see that I had 4 and a half. As I crank this up, I can crank it up to 5. So, if this is 5 volts, then I just calibrated it. Now this is not an NIST, National Bureau of Standards calibration, but it's close enough. Let's do it to channel 2. Same thing. Uh, where are we? Yeah, on 1. Move it down. That one looks like it's the same. I don't know why it's like this. There's the gain adjustment for channel 2. Let's crank it up a little bit. Hmm incorrect what am I doing wrong here it says channel 2 polarity we don't have it inverted or anything weird like that these switches kind of stick remember these scopes are pretty old oh it's because we got it uncaled right here duh got to push that in see over here the uncal is a little twist knob here clicking and over here Uncal. I'm glad I'm actually making these mistakes. So these are dumb things that happen. Over here, it pushes in and out. That uncals it. So let's cal it. Put it in cal mode. One volt per division. Let's see if we can calibrate this one. If it'll go to five. There it goes. Look at there. Yeah, there it is right there. So there we go. We've calibrated that. Again, assuming this is completely accurate. Uh, sync, just normally put it on normal. You can sync on channel 1 or channel 2. If you sync on, we're into channel 2 right now, so if you sync on channel 1, you'll never get it to sync. But if you put it on channel 2, of course, it will sync. There's our, our square wave, which is 1 kilohertz or uh, 1 megahertz. Let's see, which is it? There's the 1 kilohertz. And if we put this on point 0.1, we should have exactly 1 per sweep, and it is right dead on. So that looks great. If we put it on one megahertz, we're going to be able to go out here to 0.1 microseconds and get exactly one per division. Uh, let's see, here's our horizontal position so we can move it around. Yeah. Put that in the middle, that looks great. Looks like it's uh, doing marvelous. So, and then you put it down here in, in normal, and then you can rotate your uh, level here and it should go in and out of sync. So that works. I'm doing all this on channel two. It doesn't really matter. You can check them both out. You can put it in normal and it'll sync too. Alternate. Let's do that. Let's turn our sweep back down. We don't need to drive it for that. Let's put it in auto mode. So we get both traces. Here's one channel. There's the other channel. In alternate. See there we're getting alternate. One channel then the other channel. If we go to chopped, we get both at the same time. That's working. 
So here's our two channels. Like I say, this is cowl and uncowl on these. And when you pop them out, then they'll turn. Yeah, you know, one thing to check on all of these, uh, this is uncowl up here in horizontal. So you can rotate that. And uh, this knob right here also unlocks if you pull out on it. And then you can rotate it. That's for B-sweep delayed. We won't be checking that right now. I've actually got a separate video on that. It's a little more complicated. But that should come loose and rotate. Let's see if it does over here. Now, see, this one doesn't have that feature. So this one you can't pull out and rotate. This one's fixed right there. Um, so you could... If you were be if you were able to see this scope before you bought it, you and you did the things that I just did, then you could say, well, it appears to be working. And it even appears to be working correctly. Because I actually know this one is. If it won't do all of these things, if you can't get a, a trace, if you can't uh, you know, get something steady on it, let me go back to channel two. Let's just look at something again. Let's go back to one kilohertz. If you can't see something like that, then it's probably not working. That hasn't. That's not going over all of the features of, a, of an oscilloscope, but it's going over the the main functions of it to uh, to see if it uh, if it's working at all. And if it's working that well, then it's probably okay. So you might want to make them an offer if that's what you want. Hope this helps. One last thing I've got to add is um, please be so, oh so careful with spray cleaners on scopes like this. This oscilloscope right here, as much as I love this thing, this has always been my favorite. Um, a year or two ago, I very, very foolishly and carelessly sprayed contact cleaner. I don't remember how I got it in there, but anyway, I was spraying contact cleaner around this area. Don't do that. Contact cleaner, well, this knob right here is where the, see all these uh, letters, uh, these numbers here? It will wipe this thing totally clean. It will just dissolve the numbers right off of here until it's blank. It was, I was sick. And I was just so very, very lucky that I found a seller on eBay that had one of these for parts or repair and he sold me the the knob right here that I needed. I felt so stupid. The, these, these things do need, see this one's got a 1 meg ohm there and 50 ohm there. These are some more features. I'm not trying to go over you. I'm just trying to warn you be very careful with your spray cleaner because you can destroy your scope when you're just trying to get a little bit of a little bit of noise out of the See, this one's working quite well now. <clears throat> Using it is the best way to keep it working. But, uh, you know, I had a little noise over here in this channel. And uh, I got reckless with the, uh, with the spray cleaner. And it was almost the end of my scope. I felt sick. And I was very lucky to, to get it back in, in beautiful condition again. So... Don't make the mistake that I did, because you may not be able to uh, to save yourself. Had to throw that in. These these solvents are uh, are not benign, and and they will destroy these old scopes.